what is your target as the ministry? Well, our target was to make sure that we have done at least 14 million by the end of this year and certainly completing the other ones next year. So within the next, uh, within the next, within between this year and next year, we are targeted to finish the entire 30 million people. Now, as you know, and we had lined up, our numbers were correct. We know exactly where we are supposed to be getting which vaccines. Uh, so we are confident that even now, if we, if the situation were, in to, were to improve, we have got the capacity uh, to vaccinate uh, a lot of people per day. Our estimation is that we are, we can roll out 150,000 yeah. people per day. So in terms of the vaccination period, we have no doubt that we can do it very quickly. Magdalene here on Twitter is wondering, why can't we start producing our own vaccines if Rwanda is thinking about it? Well, let's put it this way. I mean, <laughs> Rwanda is thinking about it, but so are we. We actually started thinking about it before Rwanda started thinking about it, or at the same time as Rwanda has. You know, Rwanda has a, a capacity for laboratories. We have even a higher capacity uh, in terms of uh, Camry, which is a regional and an Africa-wide uh, system. So we have been thinking about it. And as I told you, Trevor, this is not something that you think about and you do the next day. This, it takes time to, to, to start rolling it out. We started thinking about this last year, as soon as uh, there was this problem. Don't forget that we were actually in the trials with AstraZeneca in a welcome, uh, welcome, uh, uh, Kilifi, welcome Cambridge Kilifi, you know, as early as last year when the vaccines were actually being developed. So it is not that we have just been sitting around and twiddling our fingers. We have been looking at all the possibilities and who we can work with initially uh, to produce their vaccines because we have not developed our vaccine. And uh, the whole world, you know, you know, everybody in the world is looking at uh, that possibility. But you must also wonder and ask yourself, how come that even European countries are still depending on... Uh, uh, on India for, for the supply of AstraZeneca, where we are now, South Africa, there's a huge um, Aspen facility in South Africa, which is all now going to start producing Johnson & Johnson. And eventually, you know, even Kenya is going to start um, uh, at least uh, form and filling vaccines. Yeah. So it is complicated and sophisticated. It's not easy simply make a decision and start producing vaccines the next day. Okay. Chesweki on Twitter says, what is wrong with vaccines being administered by the private sector? Well, let me explain. There, there are a number of things. And um, I, I, I see why uh, you'd be asking that. And it's a varied question. There are a number of things. Number one is uh, exactly how we can ourselves as a government um, say that uh, we can be able to monitor and satisfact satisfactorily tell Kenyans that they are safe with every vaccine that is being brought uh, uh, by uh, players in the private sector. And in fact, we had started, you know, that same uh, exercise until we realized and the uh, council, the medical council, the medical and dentist council actually came to us and said, listen, we, you will need to think again about this. You know, the sophistication and the dangers related around vaccines are such that we need to be very careful ourselves. The second thing, I think, Trevor, and I think we need to be honest with ourselves as Kenyans, is this. The possibility of abuse uh, is so high when we go into that direction in a number of ways. Number one is, you know, unless we have got a very satisfactory, uh, satisfactory uh, monitoring system, which I can't guarantee at the moment, then what you'll find is A, you get fake vaccines. You know that has already ha happened in Mexico and uh, countries in South America. That happened. The second thing that you hear is that uh, vaccines that are supposed to be free in government hospitals are now being sold uh, by people in private sector and so on and so forth. So I think denying that we have got challenges in that area yeah. and burying our heads into the ground like the proverbial ostrich is denying facts which we face. And okay. therefore... We, as a, as a government, have to be responsible enough to accept that we have got these challenges and because of those challenges. And the third reason being that we are committed as a government to ensure that Kenyans are vaccinated for free. Okay. 
And Wanja Douglas says, can the CS confirm that our healthcare system is now robust enough to manage a possible fourth or fifth wave? Well, it all depends. I think that, uh, let me put it this way, Wanja, that uh, if what is happening today was happening in March and April of last year, we would be in exactly the same position that India is currently is in, in terms of the supply of bed capacity, in terms of the supply of the um, uh, facilities in hospitals, uh, ventilators, and so on and so forth, in terms of supply of oxygen, if this was happening last year, we would be having a very serious challenge. Today, in the meeting, we emphasized to the county governments and the national government the importance of upscaling the capacity that we currently have in the country for some things, especially the supply of oxygen. We have become very aggressive in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in storing oxygen facilities in hospitals. Uh, this week alone, we will be announcing how many hospitals are storing. By the end of the, May, of the month of May, for example, MTRH will be installing a facility for production of oxygen that the biggest one in Eastern Central Africa, a 2,000 ton. Uh, facility which can even supply you know the, the rest of that whole region so in terms of upscaling our facilities we are doing the best that we can and I must say that over the last one year a tremendous amount of work has been uh, has been done however that is not to say that there is no limit to what we can be able to cope with that uh, capacity yes we have got uh, upscaled capacity but of course, whether we cope or not depends to the extent and severity of the disease. If the disease over, you know, we are getting thousands of people, yeah. then obviously, you know, that is a different challenge from the normal that we can expect. But what we are doing now is that we are preparing ourselves for a worst case scenario rather than the situation that we currently have. All right. See, as Merab is asking here that occupancy in the counties is going higher. What has the NAC thought about in terms of locking other counties apart from the DIZ? Is that an option because occupancy is going higher in counties now? The op all options are always on the table. And the situation is evaluated. The situation is evaluated in every county. And there are two things that happen. Number one is that um, on evaluation, the national government can be able to uh, take immediate steps and advise the county government on what the national government steps have been taken. The second option is where the, uh, the national, the county emergency response committees made up, chaired by the governor and the county commissioners on their own volition decide to take certain actions that uh, pertain uh, and that are specific to the individual counties. And that too, is uh, happening in some parts of the country. You will remember that uh, when uh, at the beginning of this pandemic, when uh, the county of Mombasa was very severely affected, we worked very closely with the county government. At the national level, we took steps to, uh, to close everywhere. And at the county level, they were also upscaling the testing. We, uh, they were also uh, closing certain areas that we had uh, not closed ourselves. And that is okay too. So uh, in a nutshell, there is no option that we cannot take to save Kenyan lives. There's another uh, person who calls themselves Heartstrings, says, ask CS what he thinks of the investigations going on on the misuse of COVID-19 funds in counties. I think it is, uh, it is, it is good that that happens. The role of the uh, parliament, particularly the role of the uh, Senate, is to oversight you know, expenditure of uh, resources in county governments. And I think that uh, those who have spent uh, the money in an appropriate manner will have nothing to hide. They will simply explain to Kenyans, this is what we did, this is the oxygen that we installed, this is the number of uh, hospital beds that we put in place, this is the ICU that we built, and provided that it is the truth, it is only fair that uh, Kenyans uh, 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 know and uh, understand how their money was spent, because at the end of the day, it is their money. Okay.
And there's another question here that we didn't get to hear from you. You had mentioned to Parliament that the standoff between USAID and Kenya was resolved when it comes to the antiviral treatment medication. Yes, what is the indeed. true position? You remember that is when uh, the internet um, uh, fell. Yeah. Let me very quickly explain this, um, uh, Trevor. Yeah. As I said in Parliament, and what I told Parliament, at the time that I told Parliament was the absolute truth, and what actually was uh, pertained at that time, what was pertaining at the time. Now, we were told that the problem with the release of the drugs at the airport, the ones that have been brought by uh, USAID, was essentially a question of taxes. And why was there a problem of taxes? There was a problem of taxes because the way we have dealt with our partners USAID in the past is that uh, they have sent um, their drugs, they have, all the commodities have been sent to KEMSA. And then, but because KEMSA is tax exempt, there was never any issue of paying for the taxes. Now, so USAID came and told us, look, we are concerned about uh, KEMSA, and therefore, we want to bring the, the, the drugs ourselves. We have no problem with that if USAID is the one that is bringing it themselves. The problem arose when there was introduced, without any information to anybody, a, a, a company by the name of Chemonix. We don't know Chemonix. We don't know who they are. We never knew who they were until we were told, go and get your goods from Chemonix. Now, Chemonix being a private company is such that now the Treasury imposes tax on all, all private players as far as uh, any goods coming into the country is concerned. And there is no exemption to that. Because if you start putting exemptions on private companies, the next thing that is going to happen is that you are going to put exemption on Trevor Limited and then Mutahi Limited. And then you have got, a, then you have got uh, uh, charges and uh, parliamentary inquiries into all those things so we said look you know this this is this is not standard practice and the way partners deal with each other is that they agree on something before it happens and therefore but essentially but eventually we bowed to pressure and we approached the treasury and the treasury said on this one let's just agree that the treasury will pay the taxes because somebody has to pay the taxes so we agreed that the treasury is going to to pay for them and at that point we said okay the matter is finished now let's get the rvs then the goalpost shifted and then we are to no 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 wait a minute uh, no now you have to sign uh, this thing you have to sign with chemonix so we are like who is chemonix well nobody has ever explained to us who chemonix is and we are just being told as a government this is the NGO you are going to use, or this is the private company you are going to use. So this is a discussion that is ongoing, Trevor. This is what we are, we are, we are, we are agreeing. We agreed with the American Embassy that we are going to, uh, to, to put together a joint committee that is, going to put, uh, that is going to discuss these matters and come with an amicable solution. Of course, the, the end result is that what we both need to do is to structure and make sure that KEMSA has got no questions about it and to ensure that KEMSA is uh, an efficient machine as it has been over many, many, many years. And once that happens, and we are making the necessary changes um, ourselves, and we also have technical support from USAID. Yeah. In fact, Trevor, we have said USAID can bring its own people to KEMSA and we process everything and they watch everything that they want to do. And, the second, and, and indeed, they have given us technical support with some people who are actually at KEMSA and who are going to be working with us at KEMSA. And we are very grateful about that uh, technical support because eventually the way, the, 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 the way out is to, make, is to ensure that, um, uh, that KEMSA is restructured and working as it should be. But I think that uh, we have to be realistic and say to ourselves, this is a problem and we need to resolve it all together. But let me say this, Trevor, to Kenyans. Ultimately, Ultimately, a nation cannot continue to be reliant on uh, foreigners for its sake. We have got to make the necessary sacrifices as a country.
to ensure that uh, medication for our people is either made here locally and we encourage local production and that is why we are telling the treasury and we are working with them very closely yep. to make sure the taxation regime that is applied to our local manufacturers is made favorable so that we favor the companies that are manufacturing drugs and other uh, ARVs and so on in Kenya uh, as opposed to yep. uh, or importations. But as a country, we have to come to terms with this and say, if you don't, if we do not, if we do not put our house in order and con and, and supply drugs to our people, we will always be blackmailed and ransomed to do exactly what foreigners want us to do. Okay. There's another question here coming online, and there's a question to you saying that can the government really afford free vaccinations for more than 30 million Kenyans, presum presumably at 20 USD, that would cost more than 40 billion a year. Why don't you allow the private sector to just help in this particular situation? I think I responded to that particular issue. And yes, I think, uh, let's, let's, let me explain this, uh, Trevor, a little bit, that uh, 24 million doses out of the doses that... Um, um, uh, the, 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 the listener is, uh, is, is referring to, we are lucky because under the COVAX facility, we are supposed to get 24 million doses for free, which we will not pay for. And that caters for some 12 million people. Again, under the COVAX facility, we can buy more doses. And uh, it is not that expensive under the COVAX facility because it is actually three dollars and about 60 cents i think it's 65 cents three dollars 65 three us dollars and 65 cents to buy uh, one one dose so when you put the match together yes it is going to cost us some money but this is the cost i mean what is the cost of of, of life how much do you assign to a life of you know the being alive and therefore if it means doing out doing away with some things so that we, we can vaccinate our people so be it and that, Trevor, is the reason why we are saying we have to put up our own plant. Because imagine, just imagine, because nobody knows. This vaccine has not been used, no vaccine has been used for over a year yet. So we don't know whether at the end of one year, we are then going to be told each person who was vaccinated must have a new vac uh, 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 must be vaccinated again every year. So if that was the case, then we cannot afford to be importing these vaccines every year. We have got to move to the next level and ensure that we have got our own vaccines and we stop uh, importation of the same. This is not new. It has been done and we have done it before. If you remember, Trevor, we used to import for, for since independence. We have imported PPEs. And because of certain serious effort on the part of the president, on the part of our manufacturers and our, ourselves at the Ministry of Health, now we, are, we not only make PPEs in Kenya, they actually export PPEs from Kenya. So we can get this done. We yeah. just need to work closely with the private sector. Yeah. We work very closely as a team of scientists in Kenya and elsewhere, and we have got a sufficient capacity in terms of human intelligence in our country to get this done. Okay. Anna Yeka on Twitter, who says she has a more superior question, says kindly ask the CS whether or not and at what stage exactly are they negotiating in buying a patent to make our own COVID-19 vaccine? I think that is what I've been talking about. When I talked about the form and feel uh, facility that we are talking about, there are two organizations that uh, we have already approached on this one. There are two who have responded to this and that is uh, Johnson & Johnson as well as uh, Astra, AstraZeneca. So the superior question has a superior answer. We are working, we are working to ensure uh, amongst, uh, amongst the suppliers that we work together. And by the way, we have been working with AstraZeneca for a long time, particularly in the area of research uh, in uh, Kemri, Kilifi, as I had mentioned earlier. Yeah.
CS, uh, allow me to just field a few more questions because this is a chance that Kenyans get to ask, to ask you direct questions. Mark Oseno here says, when the USAID insists on supplying ARVs through a private entity, it means the agent doesn't have confidence in the government management structures. How will Waziri address the issue of restoring donor confidence in his ministry? Okay, I, I agree. I agree with uh, Mark that uh, that is where the problems arose from. And as I keep on saying, there is no point of telling Kenyans things that are not true. But how, how but, but but I think that you know when uh, you have got an errant when you have got an errant child, you don't go and shoot the child. What you do is you work to revive and ensure that uh, the child is uh, retaught and uh, helped and assisted to come back. And I think that uh, what other organizations are doing because we work with other donors as across the world. I mean, for example, the Global Fund is a huge, huge part of uh, the supply of vaccines you know, in our country. And we are working with KEMSA with them. And also in terms of restructure, we are working with them. We are working with the World Bank. We are working um, with UNICEF, you know, who are all institutions of the century, uh, work with KEMSA and who are committed that the best thing to do is for us to restructure and ensure that uh, KEMSA is working properly. And that is exactly what we are going to do. And this is something that uh, we have promised Kenyans. I have promised Kenyans because the buck stops with me. And then you'll see what we are going to do. Yeah, there's another pushback here from Alan saying, what do you think is a long lasting solution to dealing with KEMSA? Because even the probe that was ordered by the president has not come out yet. Well, that, well first and foremost, the probe did come out. Uh, if you have been uh, looking at media, including Citizen itself, they actually announced what um, uh, the investigating agencies came up with. They even announced when uh, there was a report about uh, possible prosecutions, uh, but that's not my area. That is the DPP's uh, uh, area. I won't get into that. But what I do know is that one of the things that the president ordered was uh, to create a very transparent procurement system using the ICT platform. And that we have already done. And I can assure you, Trevor, and I assure Kenyans, that we are not just going to sit back and just get criticized every day. That's not what we do. And that's not what we are going to do. We are going to ensure that Kenyans have confidence with the people who are running that institution, with the teams that are running that institution, with the infrastructure in ICT that is going to create not only transparency, but accountability, as far as every single commodity and every single shilling in KEMSA is concerned. Okay, CS, there's another question here in terms of the people who are dealing with HIV. Someone says here there are about 1.2 million of them. As this scandal is still going on, the standoff between USAID and the government, what about the people living with HIV and AIDS? We are ensuring, and as I, as I mentioned to you earlier, we also have ARVs from other institutions. And uh, so currently, we have ARVs, we have enough ARVs across the country, even as we hold what is at the airport and, 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 and fast track that we agree with USAID so that it can be rolled out. That is, and it is needed. But we are also now opening our eyes to the fact that um, over reliance on a single source for ARVs is extremely dangerous. And therefore, going forward, we also intend to diversify the sources of ARVs. In fact, uh, Trevor, we, I, we even know there is a, an organization in this country, there is a company in Kenya that is very near getting approval of the World Health Organization uh, to supply, uh, to manufacture of uh, ARVs. And when that happens, then you'd be in a much stronger position to be able to, um, uh, to be flexible as far as uh, these kind of standoffs uh, are concerned. And as a century, as I said, you know, the solution, the solution is eventually is that we have to give our own people our own ARVs. Okay. Olum here is wondering, what did the National Emergency Response Committee think is the long-lasting solution? Because he says that the lockdowns are not sustainable economically in the long run. I would, uh, I would posture to say that lockdowns or other measures that are taken by the government are not made you know, um, just for the sake of it. They are made because they are the options that are available 
in terms of mitigating the circumstances and ensuring that uh, we save Kenyan lives. I mean, it's very painful for us. Yeah, Trevor, I can tell you this. When you say, when you go and say that we are going to uh, lock down bars, we are going to uh, make people go home early, it is not pleasant for us. It is not a good feeling. The, 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 the treasury, you know, the tre it is not a good feeling for the treasury. They are losing out oh, on, 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 on money. We are, we are aware that this affects a lot of people's lives. But, uh, you know, it is a, a, a situation, Trevor, of sitting between a rock and a hard place where you have uh, the any whatever option you take, is going to hurt somebody. And therefore, you look at the situation where you have the possibility of saving most lives. And of course, you'd like to do away with them as soon as it is possible for me to do, for us to do away with them. And uh, Trevor, when you look at what is happening in other countries, when you look at, for example, and I'm sure everybody has seen it, you started off by asking me about India. When you look at what is happening in India, you know, people just falling in the streets and waiting in hospitals and dying outside hospitals, you know, we, we would like to avoid that at whatever cost that uh, it will take. And therefore, and, 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 and the other thing, Trevor, is this, and this is something that we also must be honest about ourselves. If we could follow the rules, honestly, if everybody would agree that uh, we keep the measures, we wear our masks, we don't crowd up even in markets, we don't crowd up in buses and matatos, and uh, we keep our distances, and we do the three things, three very simple things, and that is we wash our hands, or uh, we, uh, we wear our masks, and we keep the distances. Yeah. If we do those three things, Trevor, we will be able to open up and have less lockdowns than we currently have. Yeah. But I think everybody in Kenya who is honest with himself or herself must accept that even when we say that, the system is still abused. And there lies why the government has to take the measures it does. And Benson is asking here, finally, on the same line that you're talking about, uh, CS, that would you then think gatherings like the referendum is necessary at this point? Well, I, I, there is no gathering that we have allowed at this point. Even uh, you remember that the president made it very clear and announced that there will be no political gatherings until such a time as uh, we have brought down the, um, the positivity rate that, as you are aware, is currently not down. Now, let us separate, Trevor, from those who abuse the system, what has already been announced and what has already been executed. Those who abuse the system then start blaming the same government for not taking sufficient measures. It is the same people who abuse the system who will then go around saying, oh, the government is not giving us real figures, the government is uh, not telling us the truth, etc., etc., etc. And, 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 and when they are doing so, they are doing so with a clear knowledge that they themselves are at fault. And the, the political class, to be honest and to be fair to Kenyans, has not been very helpful until the president made the decision that he made. And consequently, I think we have got cooperation from a lot of, uh, from a lot of people. There are very few people who are going out there today, you know, making... Um, uh, roadside creating roadside meetings because they are dangerous and if we do that we will pay for them and unfortunately for COVID-19 you don't pay with money money is only a section of it you pay you pay with both money and lives and it is lives of our parents particularly lives of parents those of us who are above 50 it is lives of parents that are rising more than anything else yeah and therefore we we are regret free have to keep uh, on telling Kenyans, as boring as it may seem, as, uh, you know, as repetitive as it may seem, we must still, still keep telling Kenyans yeah. what we need. CS, have Kenyans returned the oxygen cylinders like you had requested them to do? Oh, we had a tremendous response. I want to take this opportunity, Trevor, to thank Kenyans. They did a fantastic job. People even offered, the, the, the companies that uh, do oxygen, even offered people 
you bring a, a, a cylinder, I will fill it up myself and take it to a hospital. And that just goes to, goes to show the spirit of Kenyans. When push comes to show, Kenyans are patriotic and they do their thing. CS, there's a lot of hopelessness and despair around Kenyans right now with COVID-19. As the man at the helm, I want to give you a chance to encourage Kenyans. Are we winning this war, CS? Look, look, Trevor, you know, you know, uh, essentially what happens in a situation like this is that you don't get kudos for the negative. You know, what do I mean by you don't get kudos for negative? What I mean is when lives are saved, and when a situation has not deteriorated to the extent that it can, it's very difficult to appreciate that. What is much easier to appreciate is, you know, when people are dying and so on, and then there is panic and um, all sorts of uh, mambo jumbo. That is what is easier to appreciate and to see. And what I want to appeal to Kenyans and to tell them is this. It is true. We are all going through a difficult period. We are all going through a tough time some tougher than others but i would like to appeal to, to 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 you i would like to to appeal to every kenyan to please appreciate if we can save lives and we have continued if you look at what happened in india today for example the number of kenyans we have lost from when we started covid 19 on the 12th of march of last year to this day today are less than the number of Indians who died today. One day, they are less than that number in terms of the total death rate. So what I'm saying, uh, uh, friends and colleagues and fellow Kenyans, is this. As much as it is painful, you know, I'd rather have a literal inconvenience, I'd rather go a bit of a tough time knowing it is not going to last than be dead. Because when you are dead, there is no coming back, and there is no discussion. It's a, it's a, it's 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 a final. So for me, uh, Trevor, and and I would like to appeal to you and appeal to you through the media, is that yes, there is a feeling of hopelessness, and it's very understandable, especially when you 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 start a process, you open a, a school, you open a restaurant, you open a, a bar. And then a couple of months later, you are forced to close it again. But the question is, what is the choice? What choice do we have? Do we say we just continue and, and as many people as will die, die? Or do we say, let's try and save those we can. We will go through a bit of a tough time for now, but we will recover. Kenyans always do our resilience. Our resilience is something that is admired across the world. So even this time, we will not be defeated, Trevor. Kenyans will not be defeated by this disease. We will cooperate. We will go through a hard time. We will help each other. We will go back to the government coffers and see how at all the government can help. And this is what the president has told us to do. Go back and think, how is it? How can we be able to help Kenyans so that they can be back on their feet again? And this is what governments are for. So we will continue to try we will not always succeed. Sometimes we will fail. But if we can succeed more times than we fail, then Kenya will be so much the better for it. All we need is everybody's cooperation. But we will overcome. With God's help, we can overcome. CS, thank you so much for making time for us this evening and speaking to Kenyans on this matter. We'll stand by for the National Executive uh, Response, Emergency Response Committee statement tomorrow, right? You mentioned it will be tomorrow? Yes, indeed. Thank you, CS. Have a good night and thank you so much for speaking to the Monday Report here. That's Honda Boom Tai Kagwe, CS for Health, calling on all Kenyans to rally together and saying we will not be defeated by this disease. It may be a hard time for all of us here, but as long as we stand together, we will always overcome. This is the message I'm giving you out this night. Ensure that you clean your hands, social distance, sanitize as much as you can, protect each other by wearing masks, and together we will definitely overcome. We're taking a quick break from the Monday Report. When you come back, I'll read a few of your feedback here and there, and then call it a night. Thank you so much. <laughs>